Well, welcome back you two pipe smokers to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. So today I'm excited finally to get to talk with the owner of Dragon Briars. That is Joshua Ronish. Um, so Joshua, thank you again for hopping on, man. Um, I'm looking forward to the conversation. My pleasure. Absolutely. All right. I so the jabber yeah. about pipes. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So uh, first question, a little bit about you. What, what's your background? Um, all, all that good stuff. A little bit I'm about from your from upstate family. New York. Say that again. I'm from upstate New York. Okay. Uh, grew up in Saratoga. Pretty nice town. Uh, pretty much been around all over the place. Former Marine Corps. Uh, moved around the country a little bit with that. Uh, got discharged. Came back home. Uh, doesn't really say too much about the what I was into, uh, I was always growing, I grew up on a farm slash sawmill. So I was always into woodworking. My father always had little projects going on. So I kind of picked up the use of tools and, you know, ideas for building things. And was always kind of creative anyways. You know, uh, later on, I, you know, became a tattoo artist and I was a tattoo artist for the majority of my life, you know, starting from like age 16 on to do every now and then I haven't been because wow. I'm actually not living in my house right now. We're, uh, and my in-laws, as we're, uh, we're house hunting and uh, actually just uh, getting ready to close on a house right now. So it'll be nice to have a new pad and uh, build Absolutely. a brand new shop. All so, right. Uh, Excellent. Better. Definitely. Definitely. So you already touched on this a bit. Um, How did you get into pipe smoking? Now you have some woodworking background, but what, what was that jump in, into getting into pipe well, well let, let's let's start with pipe smoking actually first um and then i'm sure that leads into pipe making so how, how'd you get into pipe smoking pipe smoking and pipe building almost came simultaneously but okay. originally uh my my older sister who was a few years older than me picked up a pipe when i was probably 16 17 years old and i was a cigarette smoker and I was like yeah let me check this out so i you know, grabbed a cob pipe and i made a couple quart cob pipes just uh because i grew up on a farm there was always uh, cow corn around so i had these nice corn cobs to play around with but I'd pick up a basket pipe at a at the time, like you could get the just cheap pipes in the drug stores. So I'd grab whatever was there. Uh, started to get picked on by my friends. Like, yeah, oh, you're smoking a pipe. You're like 17 years old. What are you doing? So I kind of was a closet pipe smoker for a while, and I kind of gave it up. Just uh, just wasn't the thing. It wasn't my thing at the time. Uh, years, years, and years passed until about uh, 2016. In like January, I actually got laid off from a job. Uh, that I was working, sitting around the house, like, you know, job hunting and this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, you know, I was vaping, you know, I kind of quit the cigarettes and I was chewing and vaping. And I was like, hmm, let me try tobacco pipes. As I remember a long time ago, I had always uh, just grabbed a little pack of uh, Captain Black Gold and a corn cob pipe or some other cheap briar that I could find in, in a local tobacconist or a, or a drug store. And uh, so I was uh, doing that for a while. I'm thinking to myself, I'm looking at this pipe and I'm I'm holding it in my hands like it's two holes. <laughs> you know, there's like a, a hole here and a hole here. You put the back of it, you light it, and you smoke it. It can't be too hard to make. <laughs> so I, after not too much research, uh, you know, not even looking at social media yet, I didn't look on the Instagram or anything else. Uh, I just picked up a block of wood. You know, I knew some of the safer woods like maple and oak and things like that. I, I picked up a piece of nice uh, maple. And I just made myself a little pipe. And I was trying to figure out stem. I want to make it one out of, out of maple as well. And I started researching, you know, I'm not freehand and, you know, some pipe supplies. And I ordered the, the same thing everybody does, the pre drilled rock. You know, so I had the stem already fitted to it. And uh, what I had done is I had uh, taken a vise and I mounted a, mounted a hand drill on it. Not the cordless, but one of the quartered ones. So Trigger is actually varying the speed. So I loaded the sanding disc into the, the chuck. I had this thing sit in front of me, and I used my shop back, and I started shaping the pipe. I'm like, yeah, this is all right. I actually did that. Wow. For a good year into like my pipe building. So these are some of the pipes that I was sold, I was using that same thing where I had the that sanding disc in the chuck of that that the handheld dr uh, drill, and. Uh, I started making pipes that way until I discovered some of the, the industrial motors and variable speeds and all this. And, sure, and then, sure. And that's uh, it's not high tech, 
you know, I never really uh, um, used files at all for, for making them. I was just cutting as far as I could with a coping saw and then just like using sandpaper to bring it down. And it took forever. You know, this is a, wasn't a very efficient thing to do, but it's yeah. not realistic if you want to be in a rush making in the first place. You know, you're passing time and you know, creating something with your hands. The more time you put in, the more you appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, that's where that ended up. So like in the uh, January of 2016, I started smoking the pipe again, and I started building them. And uh, after a few months, it became uh, a bit more serious, and I started just piling these things up. And I was like, oh, I could probably make money to help pay for my hobby. So I was putting them on eBay, and they were selling. They were selling quick. So uh, when when did you begin dragging briars? Um, probably a year after that. So like okay. 2017. But a year okay. after that, I. I uh, created my brand name so to speak and I was still selling on eBay and then I discovered Instagram and then you know it's uh, been probably the best selling tool I've ever had for, for this thing because you know, I've yeah. shown my progress and it's a huge community community is great on, on Instagram sure uh, sure a lot of people there that are not builders just like the, the hobbyists that smoke pipes and collect pipes and, and there's builders as well you can get tips on and look at other people's pipes and what they're doing and and come up with ideas and you know hopefully not copying other other makers but seeing like different right. styles and uh, what appeals to you so. yeah yeah so uh i i didn't ask you this question in in the, in the questions i i sent you earlier but how'd you go with dragon briars and then on top of that and and i think this is probably connected how'd you come with the design which viewers by the way i have one of his pipes here a rhodesian um that i purchased from him several months ago. If you want a review of this, I'll, I'll put a link down. Uh, but so so how do you go with Dragonbriar, the name, and this specific aesthetic, I guess I would say? Well, I'm Dragonbriar. So dragons, I've always had the, uh, an, an admiration for. You know, it's a mythical creature and yeah. it's pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing that's sure. not cool about dragons and they blow smoke and fire and the you know, also being in the martial arts, I was always surrounded by the dragon. Uh, so that's makes sense. Briar's part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Pretty simple uh, name. You can go in depth or as shallow as you want with it, but the uh, dragons are cool. They they smoke. And you want to be a dragon too? Get a dragon there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so most of us who get into pipe smoking, we we love the tobacco, and maybe we look into a bit of the tobacco making process. Um, we start to know what kind of blends there are, mm -hmm. but pipe making usually is something that it's a bit more off to the side. I, I guess I would say um, it's it's you know we, we we enjoy it, you need it obviously, but we don't think so much. Um, I don't think most think so much into the process. So. Overall, and I'm sure every pipe may be a little bit different, but broadly, what is the be beginning to end process of making a pipe? Well, every maker is going to have their own own process of doing things. Uh, you could start with an idea of a shape. You could uh, start with the actual block of briar that you have. And this is actually one of the reasons I stopped doing commissions so much, because uh, if someone has an idea for a pipe, you may not have a block of briar that's going to be perfect for that pipe it's a kind of a working backwards when you do it that way what i like to do is look at a block of briar and i see like the optimal shape that you could possibly have in that that piece of briar and it could be like a, a gigantic block you may wind up with a teeny tiny pipe out of it because that's the the best piece of that that block that you could have used to get that pipe that you're looking for and sometimes it takes a, a really big block to make that small pipe because you just have to get the angles right in the grain to follow your shape and uh that's good advice for new new pipe makers as, as well as uh, veterans too that you know it's uh, not always the best thing to do when you have like a nice big chunk of briar say oh i can make a huge pipe with that one don't think that way think what's the best pipe that i could make from that piece of briar mm -hmm. and it could be like the corner of it you could get two pipes out of it you know if you have this big square block have one there like this and have another one there like that you know change the orientation get two two out of it um, if the grain allows it, um, you know, just uh, seeing a lot of the classic shapes. I love like following classic shapes and twisting them a bit mm. instead of having like uh, the boundary of what the mechanical 
mechanical pieces of the pipe is like it every you'll you hear a lot of the old uh, pipe makers say they're a, a pipe can be one of two things you'd be like a, a Dublin or a, a billiard or you could do some crazy freehand out of it sure and it's all about mechanics you know you have a, a line connected to a line one's a, a tobacco chamber and one's a draft hole and whatever happens outside of that it's still basically the same thing you can yeah. change your angles this way and have like a, a, a different degree of bend and that goes to like smoking preference too, like different tobaccos that you know it may determine what you want for a shape. But uh, and at the end of the day, it's still the same thing. It's a tobacco chamber. It's a draft hole to the stem. So thinking about shapes and design and, and style, uh, there are so many different uh, things you can target when you're, you're creating a pipe. So hopefully that answers some of your question <laughs> yeah no it does so so you start with the idea of course then that's i don't think we think about that but that makes obvious sense you have to have no, an idea will, of what you're i will say I, I want to make a rhodesian today so let me look at my blocks and see which one is going to be the best for what i'm looking to make i could do it that way but a lot of times uh, you know there are days where i'll just sit there for an hour and look at every single block and i'll, I'll scratch a nice smooth spot on there take a pencils and i'll look at the block and i'll write on there what I think would be best in that block, and you know, I'll organize them and say, this is a pile of like these Rhodesians, this is a pile could be like the perfect billiard, uh, there's nice cross cuts here, I could do bluefish with these. You know, you have to look at um, the angle of green at every single side of the, the block. Gotcha, gotcha. So you, you, you have the design in mind, you have your piece of briar, you start your, I, I guess you'd say carving, um, what what what's what's the process through that uh, i do a lot of work in the lathe uh, so there's a, a lot of preparation that you should do to make sure you have like the optimal uh, uh piece to work with uh number one i'll usually sketch on the side of the block what the shape is overall and i'll cut it out on the band so before i even get to that point though i'll make sure that the, the sides are parallel if you don't have that that parallel sides you're going to have problems like lining your drilling up is using pins in that chuck to create like a swivel point so that you know you have like pins in that chuck that pinch it at an exact spot but if you have a block that's tapered the thing's not going to want to turn all the way you know you, you have those pins in there oh. and it'll let go and you wind up slipping around you won't be able to meet up with that same spot again you know if it's wider in the back then you, it, you know, it's going to pinch and you're not going to get a good enough grip on it um so after uh, after making sure that the the sides are completely parallel and you should do it like for just about everything unless you're freehanding you know freehand shaping and drilling in danish style which i do every once in a while um more for like shapes that are you know not something you're going to be able to chuck into the into the, the lathe you know like doing blowfish and stuff like that you're not going to be able to put that block in because plateau on one side and uh you have a curve you know a natural curve that's not going to hold on to anything um but squaring those things and making sure those sides are very, very parallel you take a pair of calipers and slide it up and down and make sure there's no gaps and no hang-ups and uh basically start from there uh then drawing the shape on there and you draw a line where your cha tobacco chamber is going to be lined up with and then you draw where your your draft hole is going to be and on bent shapes you know you're not going to have always necessarily have a straight line so they'll have two different axes one is going to be for your mortise and one's going to be for your draft hole mm. so typically i like to drill the draft hole first spin it drill the tobacco chamber pick it out of the chuck go up that second axis and then line it up with the mortise and you know drill the mortise and then uh match the, the tenon up to it i see i see i got you so for the stem, how, how do you how do you determine what material you're going to make it out of? Do you have that in mind before you start the process, or maybe it depends on? Could be the same thing with briar. A lot of times I'll have a cool piece of stem material saying like, "What can I make with this stem now?" Sure. Like, it, you know, depending on the diameter of it, if it's a very small diameter, I'm probably going to do a straight pipe with it, or, uh, or some type of fishtail that sits into a into a um, mortise. Gotcha. Uh, a lot of times I'll do like accents, like you see a lot of different materials that I use, like exotic hardwoods or mammoth or anything else for like an accent. And I'll create a uh, mortise in that, usually using a, a dowel of briar and drilling that that dowel in there to fit the tenon in. Interesting, okay, okay. Uh, so 
actually, I want to hold off on. I was going to ask you another question, but I want to hold off on that one. Um, so, what should a pipe smoker? They're they're looking for a new pipe. Maybe they're a beginner. Wh whatever stage. Uh, this is kind of difficult online nowadays, as I think most guys buy their pipes online. But uh, what should they look for in a pipe? And I'm sure that determines or that depends a little bit on what you want to pay for. But let's just take an average price, which I don't know what an average price is nowadays. Let's just say eighty dollars. I don't know. Maybe that's low. That's high. But nonetheless, so many, so many different variables. There are a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so this may be hard to ask or hard to answer, I should say. Uh, um, it's a long, long answer. It's not a, not a hard one to, to answer. Yeah. Uh, number one, you got to think about your budget. Sure. Sure. Number that's two, a good point. Yeah, if you're not you're gonna pick up a pipe to try it, you may never pick it up again. You don't want to go spending a lot of money. You may right. want, to, want to pick up like some cobs or, or like just basket pipes, like a grab owl or a, or a Mr. Brogs or something like that. That's not gonna cost you any more than like forty dollars to when you start to try these things. Um, your blends are gonna be a big determining factor. Uh, whatever, whenever you determine like what your taste is, if you're starting with an aromatic, which a lot of people do, you know you might uh, might not might not make a difference for you you grab that cob it's whatever you smoke that aromatically is not going to taste much different uh to the untrained palate sure it's like having a having a pleasant experience uh with pipe smoking comes with a little bit of time it's almost acquired you don't just pick up a pipe and say oh yeah this is great i want to keep going and a lot of it uh you know could be like the nicotine addict switching from like cigarettes to something that he's not inhaling and trying to taste these things uh it may become more appealing that way uh, but to start off, um, you know, discover what you like first. What do you have access to? If you have a local brick and mortar or if you have a pipe club that you could uh, contact, look up local pipe clubs and just like chit chat with people, even like going yeah. on Instagram or like different pipe forums and uh, get an idea of like what good blends are for beginners out there. And you want to start with yeah. something that's a vapor or an English or, or a, an aromatic, like something mild, like, Usually when I uh, when people ask me what should I buy when I'm like, just a beginner, I say get some Lane One Q. If you mm -hmm. can't find One Q, get some Captain Black. It's just about every drugstore or like uh, place that sells tobacco is going to have some Captain Black. Yeah. Or uh, other aromatics or even their own blends, and you'll be able to give you an idea too of like uh, what to look for. Um, as far as shapes, you can't beat a billiard in my book. It's the the number one shape. It's the easiest thing to light and smoke. You know, have something with a decent length where you're not going to you know, start torturing yourself with like a, a short pipe, getting that thing too hot before you understand that you got to slow down to enjoy that. Uh, it's going to give you a better flavor and less tongue bite, less, less, less of a chance to tongue bite. Because just about everybody that starts out grabs their lighter, fires that thing up, and they sit there with a lighter and just chuff, 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 trying to make these big clouds of smoke. And next thing you know, your mouth is like got this nasty taste in it. And <laughs> your tongue is like, uh, <laughs> You know, that's where, that's where people start. Mm. Um, it's, it's because it's a hotter burning blend. I think it's like got a sugary additive to it. It's going to burn hotter. And also like Virginia's burn hotter um, right. um, because they're high sugar content. Definitely. And Definitely. mostly what the, you know, Virginia's and Burley's are what the, most of the aromatics are, are based on. Uh, so you're going to get a hot smoke if you're not careful. Sure. Like, burn fast and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, packing small bowls helps too. You know, if you start just starting out, don't pack that thing all the way to the rim because you're gonna give, your, give yourself a hard time lighting the thing and keeping it lit. And you're also, you know, gonna try to over smoke. If you like start with a smaller, smaller bowl, it's gonna light up more of that tobacco and give you instant gratification of like having some, you know, nice smoke in your mouth that's not yet had a chance to like get a big fat cherry in there and you know start burning your tongue. Um, you know, shape shape budget uh what tobaccos you're going to be smoking uh that's why you know the collecting pipes become so addicting because you may just have one pipe for one blend that you know after a while right you may know what may narrow it down to just like one particular style of blend that you like too and then you should look for different shapes and uh that, that lend a better uh smoke smokeability to each of these different blends too it could be the diameter of the tobacco chamber the length of your, your pipe the way that you actually smoke yourself once you discover all these things and you know it helps to have somebody that is a veteran pipe smoker you know say slow down you know just slow sip because the slower your draw is the yes. slower you make that fire the more flavor you're going to get out of your tobacco mm. yeah absolutely and and i'm 
I haven't been so great at this myself. I've bought, uh, I don't know, six or seven pipes in person, um, whether mm -hmm. that's at an antique store or an actual pipe shop. But uh, one thing I encourage new pipe smokers to do is actually buy in person to, to hold it, look at it. Um, if, if possible, you know, run a pipe cleaner through, just kind of see how, how it aligns um, the mm -hmm. draw. Um, it's, it's just hard to determine that on, on websites at times, especially if they're new. I mean, when, when we get more into the pipe smoking uh, hobby, we become more experienced. It's, it's easier. I'm sure, you know, it's easier to say, ah, that that's, that's to my liking, or I, I know the background of that company or that individual who's making it and mm -hmm. I can trust the quality, but in person usually is ideal for the newer guys. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, especially if you're smoking with someone with experience. Like, yes. Yes. Uh, which teach is you how to smoke, basically teach you how to pack that bowl and light. I mean, they're YouTube videos, but that can only take you so far. Right. You have somebody actually there, like breaking your tobacco up for you, showing how you how you put a little bit in that bowl first, and you'll pack it from the top. And yes, and that nice little springy bounce back on the top before you do your charring light and then fire it up the rest of the way. Absolutely. You teach you that, so they're showing you that. Definitely helps. Absolutely. Yeah, very much so. And I didn't have that in the beginning, so I I went through learning curves, and I'm sure many have, yeah, uh, yeah. but it. It's definitely better to have someone in person to for. Well, I did the same thing too. I had, uh, I had nobody to show me. Sure. So I just, it's a learning process, and just I realized like what what tastes the best for me. Like you know, I, I quickly got out of aromatics once I realized there's this whole broad spectrum of like English blends out there. <laughs> right. Same here, boy. Same here. Absolutely. Uh, and I've, and I've shared on my channel before. Uh, my first major English blend was Dunhill London mixture. Um, mm -hmm. So going right out of <laughs> going right out of aromatics into that, I tasted it and I thought this tobacco went bad. I'm gonna throw it away, and and luckily I didn't. But uh, and then after that, I mean, I fell in love with it. But yeah, it's when you get out of aromatics, and I know there's lovers of aromatics, and there's some good aromatics out there. Um, but there's a wide realm of great tobaccos that are non-aromatics. Um, mm -hmm you come to enjoy so um now one more question i did not give you before but i i this has come up with others it's a good question to answer and you're you're a great one to ask it too so i'm not a beginner anymore i'm someone who's i've smoked for a while i don't know months or a year or whatever whatever timeline that you go from beginner to maybe kind of get into a advanced beginner what have you I bought a few pipes, um, just like lower end, maybe some basket pipes, you know, some corn cobs. I'm getting the rhythm down. I want to advance. Why, uh, what, what would be, um, how would you convince someone to spend more eventually, if, and let's just say they can afford it, um, to spend more on a, maybe a custom pipe like yours over say, uh, entry level Sabinelli, entry level Peterson, etc., etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How, how would you how would you uh, guide someone in that regard? Um, if it's uh, if you're like more intermediate, you're definitely gonna have a better idea of what you like to smoke. Right. Um, then like if you want to get a uh, you know, really depending on your budget, you want to look for certain things in your pipe like like I said before like tobacco uh, chamber diameter and depth. Uh, how long the the actual the pipe is from the tobacco chamber to the tip of your stem, uh, and how you actually smoke personally, you may try varying different lengths and getting getting different uh, pipes with different lengths and you know try shorter stuff, try longer stuff, and get a better idea of like what you smoke certain blends with that tastes better because you're gonna have one one pipe that you smoke a blend in and it tastes good, but then you may try another pipe and say, hey, I really like the way this is. And look at the mechanics of it. You know, there's a there's no real perfect formula for for building a pipe. It's what you learn to uh, to do yourself as a builder uh, that makes it appealing for maybe the way you smoke and the way other people say, yeah, I like the way this smokes. And you take that that feedback and say, okay, I'm gonna start doing it more like this. Um, yeah. yeah. Having a stem with like a good slot funnel, not just like a hole that's drilled and then like a little tiny funnel at the end, like you see a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of uh, 
name brands, I won't, I won't give any name brands, but you'll see even pipes that are two or three hundred dollars that still will have like a really nice long slot funnel. And the whole mechanics behind that is like when you're drilling a stem, it has a tapered bit you know, that comes from your, your draft hole. Your draft hole is usually like a five thirty second inch draft hole. And the idea of having a funnel is to narrow that down and spread it so that the smoke comes out of the end more in a widened stream instead of oh. just like focused in one spot. That's what, if it did come out just that one little teeny tiny hole, you're going to have that one spot in your mouth where that heat is all head, like focused towards. Um, so the idea is having that tapered stem that comes down to a certain point, usually ending somewhere like about an inch back or even farther. Uh, I usually bring the taper like right up to about half an inch from the, from the tip of the stem. And then you're creating that funnel to create, like to increase the, uh, the diameter of the hole into a slot that matches the diameter of the draft hole. That will decrease any resistance that you have in it. Any resistance that happens inside that airway is going to create heat. You know, wherever it has to back up, it's compression. Compression causes heat. Sure. So by having a nice smooth, smooth airflow, it kind of teaches you how to smoke. If you have like this Mr. Grab or Dr. Grab or whatever uh, those pipes are that don't have the have a nice slot funnel on an open airway, you're going to be fighting the thing, you know, because you don't have that open draw that helps you to keep the tobacco. Unless you sit there over lighting it and burning it, you wind up like, you know, charring the stuff at the point where you're just not really getting as much smoke as really, uh, you're actually getting more smoke and not steam, which is where your flavor is. Yeah. yeah so, um, having a, an airway that's nice and clear and, uh, you know, learning how to slow your roll and, uh, getting the most out of those tobaccos is uh, what you need to, need to focus on. Absolutely. That could, that could happen with any shape. Sure. Any, sure. any tobacco that you use and any, any pipe doesn't matter what the, the diameter is. It's not till later when you like to learn, when you learn more of, uh, how to smoke and what you prefer. Uh, you'll find that like when you're smoking a vapor, you want a nice narrow bowl that's that's nice and deep because you want to slow that burn down. But anytime you have a larger diameter bowl and a larger diameter tobacco chamber, you have a bigger fire at the top. So that's going to create more heat. And there are certain you know blends and certain tobaccos like Orientals or Latakia, which is an Oriental, uh, they burn cooler. So you can have a bigger flame at the top without creating too much heat. Whereas uh, the more sugary tobaccos like Virginia's, you want to slow their, their slow their burn. Uh, so by narrowing that that tobacco chamber, it's going to only give you a small amount of fire. You get to enjoy it a lot more. Mm. That makes sense, and I'm glad you touched on that because I know I would have had folks ask me uh, about uh, to ask you again about the the distinctions of of what blends go well with with different pipe sizes because that's always talked about. And you don't know in the beginning. In fact, I think most beginners, you you probably just won't notice overall um, mm -hmm. until you get more used to, to to smoking in general. But that's that's always good to keep in mind. And and on that matter, I did not think about it. Um, and again, folks, I'm I'm smoking one of his pipes. That tapering, um, I did notice though. This is a a five inch uh, uh, length pipe. It smokes cool, so it's not necessarily a long pipe by no means, yeah. but it's a cool smoking pipe. And I did not put it together about the, the airway and the tapering. Um, that's interesting. That's knowledge I did not know about. I like that. I like that. Uh, so I did have a, a, a question come in from one of the viewers. Uh, his name is uh, Regular Joseph on the, the YouTube channel. And so Joseph knew, I, I put out that I was gonna be interviewing you. Joseph did ask, um, I picked up a few pre-drilled briar blocks, and I'm going to attempt to make a pipe with hand tools only. Never made one before. Any tips or advice? Thank you in advance. Well, the first uh, first advice I would say: take your time. Hmm. That's it. It's, it's uh, when you're using your hands. It's, uh, uh, basically, when you use machines, you're using a machine because it saves you time and it does a more efficient job. Um, you're gonna have to work at it. Uh, when, when you're building a pipe with just hand tools, uh, if it's something that you already have or you want to pick up, you should have some files for your shaping, uh, various sandpapers. And you have like, the files are really important because you have like a big, big heavy duty rasp file that you can like really, really uh, take a lot of material off the time. 
it's the same thing with sanding. You're going to start with your, your more aggressive grits and then work down to the finer grits when you're finishing. Uh, but you want to basically get your get an idea of your shape. Um, if you're not using a bandsaw, you can actually use a coping saw if you have one and just mark your line out. Try to cut as straight as you possibly can to the contour of your, unit, uh, of your pipe uh, that you can. Uh, and you can do it on the lengthwise too to bring that stem down. The less, uh, the less you have to remove with files, the more active you're going to be too. Uh, so just take your time with your files and uh, work. If you have a symmetrical shape that you're working on, make sure you like work on a small area on one side and then turn on it, look at it, and kind of guide yourself to work on the other side in the same same small area. So you have that completed. Then work on another area, then move to the other side, work on that area. And then uh, move on to another area until you've created that symmetry. And you can do the same thing all the way around too. So if you're just like generally moving to the outside and bringing it all the way in, and then fine tune later, you can do that too. Try, just try to keep this even as possible and just take your time, enjoy it. So and, uh, um, just find out what works for you too. So what works for you may not work for somebody else. If something sure. becomes, you know, becomes easier, Let's say I like uh, using a, this file to do just about everything until I have to start sanding. You can do it. You know, if you're not um, not having a good time getting everything down rough and then going down to finer files and finer and finer files, uh, just stick with that big one and just just going to take you more time sanding and start with good heavy grits. Um, a lot of what I do still uh, as a tool is I take wood sticks and I wrap them with sandpaper. You know, just sometimes there are certain spots that you're not going to be able to get into. Um, say if your stem is like a full bent, full bent shape, you have a very small gap in there and you can't get your, your sanding wheel in there. You got to improvise. So a lot of times I'll take a rat tail file or even like a chopstick and wrap it with sandpaper and just get it in there and those little crooks, little, little, little nooks and crannies. Huh. And, you know, just figure out what works, what works for you. You know, flat yeah. stick. Think about the shapes of the files too. You can get different shaped files, but wrapping a, a sandpaper around a different shaped stick will give you the same effect too. And I actually prefer sandpaper sometimes because it, you know, if it stops working, you get a fresh piece of sandpaper instead of like smoking it with a file. These files gradually wear down to the point where they really stop working. Sure. You have to buy a new file. Whereas a piece of sandpaper, if it stops working, Throw it in the garbage, grab another piece of sandpaper, and start all over again. Absolutely. Man, really good info. That, that's going to be helpful for folks interested in, in, in getting into pipe making. So, last question I have. You're obviously a pipe smoker. What are mm -hmm. some of your favorite blends? Um, I'm a Latakia monster. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much uh, I have my, my top 10. Um, I'll give you my top 10, probably. Uh, it's pretty much a tie for the top. Um, I love uh, Star of the Explic is one of my favorites. I smoke every day. Mm. Uh, if I had to put a, um, what I smoke the most, I probably go through um, an eight ounce can of Star of the East Flake every three or four weeks. Wow. And that's including smoking everything else that I smoke. But my absolute favorite two tobaccos are uh, Penzance by S. Perica. Mm which is unobtainium, <laughs> as you may know, but I have pounds of it stored away. Yeah. And the other one is uh, Seattle Pipe Club's uh, Plum Pudding Special Reserve. Those are my two favorites. I really can't make up my mind between which one is my favorite. It depends on what mood I'm in, to which one I grab if I'm going to have a special smoke. Absolutely. And there are a lot that go from down from there. But those are my top two. And I smoke uh, Star of the Ace Flake a lot. I smoke a lot of uh, GLPs as uh, uh, quiet nights oh that's a great i was going to ask you if you liked it wonderful blend the, and it's funny too because penzance is my favorite and a lot of the blends that compare to penzance flavor wise are the star of the east flake was probably closest in the uh, in flavor but the um quiet nights is a little bit more complex and uh definitely satisfying with a lot of key but it also has a greek in there too so you get a little funky spice in there as well yes and it's, it's a super complex blend and it's actually what I'm smoking right now is Quiet Nights. Oh, there you go. I, uh, I love Quiet Nights. Um, yeah, it's a complex blend. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. 
fantastic. Yeah, and there's, there's a million other Englishes out there, like GLPs has a bunch. I spoke a lot of Sexton, uh, Westminster. Gaslight is a phenomenal blend. Uh, and that's mm. a, Gaslight's actually a really good uh, uh, plug for somebody to start with. Sure, never sure. Plug tobacco because it's a uh, very cool burning. It's yes, fun it to is. get your knife out and carve out nice little slices and see what works best best for you. Making like a really fine ribbon out of it, or making it real chunky and like getting a slow burn that can smolder for like two hours in a one inch chamber. You know, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'm, I I mentioned it several times on my channel. I'm I'm kind of a GOP's fan. I mean, just most of his blends, okay. not all. Everything he touches touches turns oh. gold. He is just, he's a master at it. He is excellent at his craft. Um, so most of his blends, I, I, I'm i a big, big fan of. Um, right now I'm smoking Stonehenge Flake, which is the only one that Galwith and Hogarth uh, uh, produce uh, with him, or they, they actually, yeah, they actually produce it, but, um, which has Lakeland Essence. I don't know if you ever tried it. I have plenty of it. Do you? Okay, okay. That's, that's probably my biggest... Uh, everyday blend and then Chelsea morning as well which I, I love Chelsea morning in the morning um, it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a good beginner or beginning of the day blend for me but um, like six pence a lot too yes yes absolutely absolutely well man that's that's all the questions I have but before I let you go um, and we end where can people find you keep up with you all that good stuff on social media website things like that so Instagram is king. I'm pretty much there most uh, most often, you know, posting pictures and doing a lot of sales there. I do have an Etsy page. Uh, you can just look up as Dragon Briars. I do uh, put a lot of pipes on there as well if they make it from the the, uh, the Instagram page. Uh, so my Instagram is Tattoo Josh T A T two uh, underscore J A W S H underscore Dragon underscore Briars. I believe it is. Uh, or you can just look up Joshua Ronish and uh, you'll find it that way as well. Great. Um, I'm on Facebook, but I'm really not on Facebook that much. <laughs> I post there every once in a great while. Sure. Um, but it's just kind of uh, Facebook in general has kind of lost uh, my interest lately, kind of lackluster these days. And, I hear you. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Instagram is really the place to find me. Definitely. Right, gotcha. Gotcha. So, guys, Dragon Briars, um, that, that's his. His, his company name, I guess you would call it. And so look him up. As I mentioned, this is one of the pipes I received from him. I, I bought from him. Love it. It's one of my favorite pipes in, in my uh, in my collection. So I definitely recommend it. Check out his his stuff. Um, I know you'll you'll be happy with with what you get from him because he puts a lot of work in it. It's quality um, and, and you'll experience that in the in the smoking experience. So, Josh, man, thank you so much for for oh, meeting with me. I know a lot of folks are going to enjoy this, so um, I appreciate it. And, and if you uh, if you can't find me on social media, if you're not a social media person, but you find your way to this video, you can also uh, just uh, email at uh, uh, dragonbriars at gmail.com. That's an easy one. Absolutely. Dragonbriars, the email, or gmail.com. Uh, so yep. remember that, guys. All right. Well, guys, y'all take care, and we will be back next time for either another uh, discussion or a tobacco review. So y'all have a good day. Happy smokes.